All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks. So we're very early. We started about two months ago, uh, and this is less of a pitch deck and more of a progress report. So hopefully you'll be, hopefully you'll be gentle and tolerant uh, of me as I stumble through this, just put together at 2 a.m. last night. <laughs> so uh, my startup is called Mixer, and uh, our mission is to connect people in face-to-face -face conversations, because we think that face-to-face -face is really the pinnacle of human communication. All of the other forms of communication that we've developed uh, recently, uh, like email, uh, Skype, instant messaging, all of these lack in one way or the other. And we really want to get people back to that basic elemental face-to-face -face connectivity. Uh, we think there's the most value there. Now, we called our company Mixer because we see ourselves as hopefully a replacement or a disruption to uh, the social mixer. And the social mixer, oh, okay, how do I advance here? One second. Here we go. So, social mixers. You've seen this scene before. In fact, we just lived through it. One where you walk into a room, there's some snacks, maybe some beer if it's in the evening, a coffee and donuts if it's in the morning, and you're thrown into a situation where now you've encountered 100 brand new faces. Okay, well, maybe not all of them are brand new. Maybe you know five or six of the people already. And then there's 95 brand new faces. So, uh, the intent and purpose of these events is that you want to go in, you want to meet new people. There are potentially valuable professional contacts here. You know, uh, if you get to know the right people, they can help you. They might be your customers, or you might be their customers. They can help you in one way or the other. So people flock to these events in droves. If you've gone to meet up, you see hundreds and hundreds of these things going, out throughout, going on throughout the Twin Cities. So this is the state of things today. Um, there have been some studies done on what happens in a mixer event. Uh, how much do people actually engage and interact with new people? And the results are actually quite interesting. One of my professors at Columbia University, Paul Ingram, specializes in this kind of stuff. And um, you know, his, result, uh, his uh, study is kind of the basis of my company. So really interesting results came out of his study. He tagged 100 participants through several events. Uh, people who largely didn't know each other uh, with electronic tags, and he tracked their movements throughout the room to see what they did and who they actually talked to. And uh, some of the more interesting tidbits are if you are a male, the more attractive you are physically, the more likely you are to move around from one group to the other. So you buzz around like a little social butterfly. Um, uh, Does that mean if I'm a social butterfly? <laughs> I think there's a causation, correlation thing going on there. <laughs> uh, but maybe, I think you're quite attractive, sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you are female, the more attractive you are, the more likely you are to stay in one place and not move and talk only to people that you already know. Very interesting. Another interesting result it's highly unlikely for you to go and break into a new group, you know, these social circles that you see, with three to five people standing around talking. Uh, if you don't know any of them, you are not going to go into that group, uh, and they never observe this. If you are not the same race, the same race as at least one of the other people in that group. Very interesting result. Um, but overall, throughout the course of all of these social interactions and mixers that they observed, there is uh, one kind of common thread throughout them, and it's that they're just not, they're just not very effective. Um, so even when you went in there with the stated purpose of going in to meet new people, you didn't actually meet that many new people. Um, so they say, our results suggest a failure of mixers with regard to promoting meetings between people who did not know each other before the event. A failure. So these, they, don't, they don't meet the stated purpose. Um, so that's what we want to try and fix. And we took a look at what goes on in social mixers. What are the problems? And, and where can we ease some of the pain? So for the participants, you know, you don't meet as many new people as you think you will. You might meet, you know, three, four, five. If you're very, very active, if you're a handsome man, 
like that gentleman there, you might meet 10 or 15 new people, but there are 100 there. Uh, and what's the quality of the people that you're meeting? You've got to fight traffic, you know, you've got to get off work early, you've got to worry about childcare maybe. There's pressure to look good, you've got to dress up nice, you've got to have showered. <laughs> you know, there's a hygiene and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, dress up. <laughs> it's optional, but it does help you if you do. Uh, is, what's that? Uh, there, actually, I haven't done the analysis. That, that's, that's more of a gut feel. If you shower, it helps you meet people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so breaking the ice, there's anxiety involved in walking up to a group of three or four people that you don't know who are already engaged in a conversation, walk in and say, hi, I'm Dave. Stop your conversation and pay attention to me, right? That's, um, it's hard to do, even for the most outgoing of people. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> I do believe that. Uh, it's hard sometimes to meet the right people. So it's kind of random. You don't know who you're going to run into. You're just picking people based on who's available. Whoever turns from a group and you can, oh, okay, you're free. I can talk to you. Or we're both standing by the coffee uh, thing. So why don't we talk? So it's a little bit random. It's, and it's hard to keep a person's attention. So, you know, you've had the experience, I'm sure, where, that I've had, where you're talking to somebody, you think uh, this conversation could be going somewhere, and then all of a sudden their eyes are looking over here. They're not looking at you. They're looking past you, looking for who they should talk to next, right? That's not a very good feeling, and it kind of breaks that connection that you've got, that human connection that you're trying to establish, the fundamental basis of all human communication. So for the organizers, these events are also not very good. Um, you gotta find a venue. We're lucky enough to have this awesome venue here uh, uh, weekly, but if you are an organizer trying to schedule an event for the first time, you gotta figure out where you're gonna have it. You gotta figure out who's gonna cater it, who's gonna provide food and drink, how you're gonna pay for it, who's gonna fund this thing. After the event, you know, there's some questions you've got as well. Who, who was there, who attended it, uh, was it a useful event? Did people meet each other that wanted to meet each other? You know, what, what are, what's the demographic breakdown of the group that showed up? Was it 40% female, 20%? Uh, what industries did people come from? Maybe it's an industry mixer, so did I get a bunch of vendors and no uh, customers, or too many customers and not enough vendors? Should I do this event again? Did I invite the right people, or do I need to change the mix of people that I'm inviting to the next one of these. All of these questions you've got, and really some very rudimentary tools for how to answer that, paper lists or Excel, um, and not very deep analytics. So these are some of the, the flaws that you've got in the social mixer. So enough about the problems. We're here to provide a solution. And the critical slide that's missing right now between this one and the next one is actually what mixer is. Um, and it is a application and it is a platform. It's two in one. And the idea is that the platform is going to serve more than just the mixer application. So our, the, the first use case that we've targeted is the social mixer. Um, and the way it works is that you'll have an application on your phone or on your tablet or on your PC that if you get invited to one of our mixers, mixers with a Y, um, you can register for the event using LinkedIn or Facebook. And at the appointed time, let's say it's Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m., all you have to do is sign in with your app. You know, it can be in your office. Uh, it could be at home. It could be, you can be on the beach. Um, but you just have to log in. And the system is actually going to take all of the participants and match them in one-on-one -on -one, uh, video conference uh, conversations where alongside the conversation, you can see the person's profile. They've also signed in with LinkedIn or Facebook, so you see who you're talking to. You can skip, fast forward past that first two minutes of conversation, which is, gosh, what do you do? What's your name? Um, who do you work for? What industry? Do we know any people in common? All of that can be short-circuited because you're already seeing all the vital statistics about the person as you're talking to them. Um, and the system is going to enforce the mixing. So the, the organizer of the event can set a duration for each of the, the meetings. They can be you know, three minutes. Maybe it's a speed dating event. Or it could be 15 minutes a piece. Maybe you want really deep, long conversations. 
But at the, at the end of the duration, the system is going to force the conversation to end and connect you with somebody else. So there's no anxiety around who do I talk to next. You will talk to someone new. Um, uh, so that's the, the rough sketch. Um, so this is my fun with PowerPoint animations. If, if this represents two groups, clusters of people that are standing together in a social mixer event, what we aim to do is to take this unstructured event and turn it into something that is structured. It's going to take you, pair you to people again and again repeatedly. So maybe this guy talks to this guy next and she talks to her next. Um, and, and you're not going to repeat and talk to somebody that you've already spoken with. Um, and of course, you've got the profile information, so as you have that conversation, you already have a head start on, on all of the, you know, the basic fundamentals of that conversation. All right, so progress so far, where are we? Um, we've done a technical proof of the, of the P2P technology, so the, the video conferencing is P2P, and that's one of the strengths of our platform. It does not require heavy uh, server lift in the cloud. Um, it's all P2P and the server is more of the scheduler and the brains behind who has talked to whom and the, the, rich, the richness of the, um, of, of the human connectivity uh, information. Uh, we are working on a prototype right now. In fact, we had a hackathon week last week where we mocked up as much as we could. And that gave us a really good idea of what needs to be done between now and the end of December when we aim to have the prototype done. Uh, incorporation and legal mumbo jumbo, all of that is in progress now. So we're working to find the right attorney to work with uh, and get all of that set up. And then, you know, we're also setting, incorporating in layman's terms uh, so that we understand our relationship and how we're going to onboard uh, new people and, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Rough timeline. Uh, so first quarter of next year, we're going to do fundraising, friends and family round. Um, I've got uh, a, a network of pe people, uh, you know, here's one. Um, also, some of my classmates are active angel investors, and so I'm going to look to them, and we're going to look to raise around in the quarter million to half million dollar um, uh, amount. Uh, second quarter is going to be planning around the development, the, the development of the actual product, and then some hiring. And then summer 2016 um, is going to be some serious hardcore development with whoever we decide to hire. And uh, Steve and I, Steve, uh, Steve is my co-founder there. Um, we have some ideas about how we're going to um, uh, do that in a way that's going to be fun and engage hopefully some, uh, some skilled and young developers and give them an opportunity to get in on the ground floor of our, of our uh, business. And then some steps here. And then at the end, we profit. So <laughs> those are our plans. So what do we need from the community? Uh, we need test users. Uh, we've got kind of a beta product that we really want to um, get in the hands of people. So if you know of any people who are having meetups or these social mixers of small groups that would be willing to work with us, we might just set up some paper and pencil games to help uh, track how people interact and what's important to people. Introductions to angels, that would be very nice. Uh, Help us identify the market that we are looking at. How big is the market? How much of the market do we think we can capture? These are things that are on my mind and I haven't done the research uh, really to figure that out. And if you can help identify competitors in the space, that would be nice too. I've been looking and I haven't found anyone that directly competes. I see a lot of people in adjacent uh, industries. You know, LinkedIn, Meetup is one. Uh, GoToMeeting, WebEx, all these guys kind of do this, but not exactly what we are aimed at. Um, so if you can help us with any of this, please see me afterwards. Um, we'll exchange information. I'd love to, to talk some more. Um, and that's it. We're Mixer, and this is our first presentation. Thank you for your time. Nice job, Dave. Um, I do have a, an extra microphone here, if you wouldn't mind using it, because we have kind of a large crowd, and you kind of have to hold it close to your mouth. Uh, good morning. Thank you for doing this. Uh, part of the dynamic of a conversation in a, gr in a small group are uh, interactions between more than two people. How do, you, how do you address that, or are you thinking about that? We are thinking about that. <clears throat> and eventually, we intend to broaden the, the platform so that it incorporates more than just 
one-on-one -on -one conversation. It can actually host three, four, five people conversations, again, in that kind of peer-to-peer -peer way. Uh, so we are thinking ahead, because you're right, there, there is that dynamic where ideas bounce around and they can morph, and people sometimes like to take a back seat. They like to observe two other people talking, and that's a very important part of human social interaction as well. So you're right to, uh, and that is uh, something that we will eventually uh, address. And we're building the platform out flex uh, with enough flexibility from the start that we will be able to, the number of participants is, isn't something that uh, is locked down from the start. It can be tweaked. Um, I, I know you have some secret steps in there right before profit. <laughs> uh, any thoughts about what that is? Um, who is going to pay? Ah, yes. Yes, who is going to pay? Very good question. And that's something that every startup needs to really think about. Um, the users will not pay. So that is something that I am beginning to, to realize as I look out there and uh, understand the market. You're not going to be able to charge 100 people five bucks to go to a mixer, no matter how much uh, you save them from driving and having to put on makeup and you know worry about childcare. Um, they expect this kind of thing to be free, but there are some freemium additions that you can add on as well. So we we actually had a conversation last week with a company in the Twin Cities that does something uh, vocal coaching. So what they want to create is a software plugin to the platform that, as you are having a conversation with somebody. It is monitoring the rate of your speech, the dynamics, the pitch, the, the variability, the, the, the rate at which you're speaking. And all of these things are um, uh, cues to your emotional state uh, that are, are very helpful. People pay big money for vocal coaches that help them speak better in, in these types of situations. And so their idea is, hey, we'll be a plug-in. You guys can feed us the audio stream. And we'll give real-time feedback to these guys about, hey, slow down. You're incomprehensible right now. Or, you know, you're muttering. You're, you're getting really quiet and nobody can hear you. Um, so, uh, you know, that could be a freemium add-on. Ultimately, though, I think the big payers of the, for the platform will be uh, people who are interested in advertising to the people that we are, uh, that we count as the users. So the payers will be people who want access to the communities that we have. One thing that, you know, I haven't shared everything about the platform and, and how it works. In between each of these meetings, there will be a pause. There's naturally a pause in between your 10 encounters that you've got. And so what, what, what do you fill that pause with? Well, you can fill it with survey questions. How useful was that person you talked to? Uh, how much do you think you might like to drive a new BMW i3, one or five, you know? Um, or maybe like a short 15 second ad. So there are things that you can do to fill that space in between the, uh, the conversations where normally, you know, in a real life situation, you're sitting there looking around, who do I talk to next? Who do I talk to next? Uh, we'll fill that and we'll charge people to do that. Actually, I was going to ask a similar question if you had uh, identified a revenue model yet. So you've answered that. So I'll go to, I guess my next question is, who do you perceive to be your, your best market opportunity? Yeah, the best market opportunity. Uh, we perceive, well, I want to start with the social mixer, especially in professional networking context, because it's what I'm familiar with, and I think that I can get some customers early. Um, uh, I've got relationships. I'm in the middle of going to a business school right now that is a joint program, uh, three pretty big names, and um, I can get all of them on board as customers. So those will be the initial customers, and we'll start with kind of saturating that market. Uh, the platform uh, is going to be extensible, and I think that eventually it will go into uh, recruiting. So it could be used for organizations that want to recruit and need to interview a whole bunch of people. Maybe it's trying to mix a, a group of 10 recruiters or 10 people on the hiring team with a pool of 100 applicants, and they all need to talk to each other. We can help address that. Um, dating is another one. Um, uh, and I think ex will extend also into real life, so augmenting real life mixer um, events or conventions. So uh, my example is Amazon reInvent. I was just at Amazon reInvent last uh, last month or two months ago 
in Las Vegas. 18,000 people at Amazon reInvent. How do you even meet the right person in a situation like that? It's nearly impossible. There's things going on all the time, all over the place. Even the events where they bring everyone together, like game day or when the DJ plays, you are not going to meet. You have a very low likelihood of meeting the person that you really wanted to meet. I wanted to talk about channel partnerships. Well, there are 100 people here among 18,000 to talk about channel partnerships. But where are they in this gigantic, vast field with a DJ playing at the end? Um, uh, so our, the, the goal of the platform is to be able to be sold to people like that who are throwing conventions and be able to hold small mixer events either virtually or even in person. So our, our uh, goal is to one day extend to help facilitate in-person mixers by telling you, here's who you're going to talk to, here's their profile, and you're going to go to table E2 to sit down and have a seven-minute conversation with them before you rotate. How do you account, good morning. Good morning. How do you account for body language and mm. the shower odor? <laughs> <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent, but how do you account for those physical presences in this or the lack thereof? Um, well, hopefully that we're removing that dimension of human communication. So maybe you don't smell so great. Well. Fortunately, there's no uh, nose phones yet, right? You don't plug in nose plugs to smell the person at the other end. So we're cutting that dimension out. Um, there is an element of body language, which is important. But I would argue that body language sometimes stands in the way of talking to people. Uh, I know that in a lot of my classes, there are people that are very shy. They sit in the back. They don't talk a lot. Um, but I always make it a, a point after class to go and engage with those people because they are oftentimes the most fascinating, interesting uh, people to talk to. And so, uh, and they hate events like mixers. They don't go to the mixers. You'll never meet them there. And so we're opening up a, a whole new audience uh, that wouldn't, you, you might ne not uh, ordinarily talk to by cutting body language, by cutting the shower factor out of uh, the, the conversation. And also the height factor, I'm five foot four. I go into some of these events, especially in the financial services industries. These guys are like, they're all six foot two, they're handsome, they're well-dressed, and like I come up to their belly button. And then, you know, like, if I have to go like this to have a conversation, first of all, no one notices me. And if I'm in a group of three to five people, they all talk over me. So we're, we're cutting a lot of these dynamics that keep us apart out of the, the, the equation and connecting people at, uh, on a level playing field. Hey David, also David. How's hey David. Um, you kind of hinted at it earlier on the target market, but I know for a fact the University of Minnesota Alumni Society did, I thought it was actually your product oh, when you okay. started giving your presentation, but they did a, a virtual networking event linked to LinkedIn. Okay. So I know for a fact there's a huge demand with alumni associations I think you hinted you That's already great. making connections with three, but yeah. I just wanted to make that comment that U of M is, I don't know if they're, I don't know how much they paid or what their relationship was with that service, but I know for a fact that U of M is very interested in this. Awesome, and if anyone knows anyone at the U of M Alumni Association that they could introduce me to, I would appreciate that introduction. <laughs> have you, going back to the last point, have you talked to that demographic um, that's very shy, usually doesn't go or never goes to an event like this, and ask them, you know, would something like this make you comfortable enough to engage in those conversations? Yeah, that's a good question. And unfortunately, there's not a gathering point where they all go. <laughs> um, not, yet. not yet, right. But there are a lot of places that they don't go. Yeah. But I do know a lot of people like that, and some of them I have pitched this idea to. And they, I'd say that they see the value in it before my more outgoing uh, and extroverted friends. So the people who are extroverted, it takes time to explain to them why this is maybe potentially valuable. To the introverts, they're like, this is great. I, I love it. Especially when I talk about the anxiety of breaking into a social circle. Because they've been forced into situations where they feel like a wallflower because they're standing at the edge of the room and... They, they're trapped in this room for two hours. They got to be there for whatever reason, and they just don't want to be. Uh, 
To follow up in terms of your, uh, your providing it for free and kind of relying on advertising model instead of uh, a payer model, mm -hmm. have you tested that or talked to potential users as to the, the non-interest or the um, not being willing to pay? Because I can see this as being kind of a, uh, a cost of acquisition um, concept for um, various people that are trying to find, find customers, find, mm -hmm. find uh, relationships. So I think a, a minimal cost uh, for uh, either per contact or per per uh, session may make sense. So have you tested that? Or no, we, that has not been tested. That's all gut feel. So if you've if you've got an idea of how we can test that, uh, beside from just talking to a bunch of people, I'd love to see it. That's one of the th reasons we want, we need test users is we want to experiment with different cost models, different. How annoying is it when you're asked a certain number of questions in between meetings? Is it intrusive? Is it creepy? Uh, is it creepy when the person on the other side knows who you work for and all the people that you're connected to? Or is that actually valuable? So these are things we haven't tested yet and that's why we need a lot of help finding test users. A uh, couple things. Uh, I think your uh, large advantage, uh, a significant group that you will have as users will be millennials. And um, millennials are a harder to reach market. So I think one of the uh, revenue uh, sources you could have is uh, uh, market surveys. Um, basically uh, com having companies uh, pay you to ask millennials uh, questions about their buying preferences, et cetera. Absolutely. You're absolutely then I right. Have yeah. Other thoughts that I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, great. Yeah. Love to hear them. Um, just on the um, I forgot for a second my question. <laughs> um, the to show the efficacy of your product. So as you go and pitch it, mm -hmm. do you have any data that shows that, you know, you had a lot of data that said that social mixers don't work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and on that, I, I'm guessing from what you've said that social mixer means business mixer. That you didn't just look at, because there's social mixers that are strictly for uh, meeting somebody to date, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, along those lines. That's right. Which is a very different, for me, that, that conjures up much different um, feelings of mm -hmm. nervousness and how do I look. Then if I'm going to a business mixer, which you still think about those things, but very different in terms of the, uh, this is hard for me to break the eye. I mean, that's a very difficult thing for most people to go and try and present yourself to a group of potential suitors yeah. or people you're going to ask out. Very different than a business mixer where we might be able to have kind of a, you know, short term, just maybe a connection and it's much more casual. So yeah. was that data that you or your premise is built on also applied and tested in business mixing? groups or business networking? It's specifically for business networking Okay, specific. Groups. Okay, yeah. so it sounded like that, but I just wanted to clarify. The other thing is what really is going to, I think, you know, that millennials and breaking into that single user is a very difficult thing to create a, a, a mass of mm -hmm. people using it mm -hmm. and going with like what David was saying about alumni groups and some of the things you're, ta you're already doing is a great place to focus your energies as you're starting out, but you're going to have to show data to them of that this actually, we have all this data to show why you shouldn't do social mixers. Right. Do you have strong data that shows of, of all these connections made, which I'm guessing you don't yet because you're just starting, mm -hmm. um, you know, but how are you planning to collect data to be able to show here's what doesn't work and this is the percentage of connections made created closed business or however you, how are you planning yeah. to measure to show, yeah. man, this is, wow. So people just can't help but sign up with you and use your product. And that's the, that's the actual, the tough part is, because these relationships that are established, can you really attribute them to our platform? And then how do you know when business is done three years down the road as a result of this? That's data I'd love to be able to show. And I think after we actually get into the market and we've been used for a year or two, we'll be able to trace back. So we are gathering um, a history for each individual of all the events that they've been to, all the encounters they've had with other people. And I think that it be, will be eventually possible to do some sort of regression to see um, you know, how close people actually become on the social networks like LinkedIn or Facebook in terms of posting on each other's pages or liking to see 
if our initial point of contact through Mixer actually led to a real uh, relationship. Um, in terms of selling the users on this, uh, that's why I kind of want to start with my business schools because I, I, uh, when I'm in uh, New York in December, my plan is to talk to Paul Ingram um, and get him on board as one of our advisors. And if, if he's an advisor to our company, then I, th I have a high degree of confidence that I can get the Columbia Alumni Network uh, and um, all of the different student clubs on board as users because we can publicize that very uh, effectively throughout the Columbia um, Network. So a uh, question for you here is uh, you thought about like a subscription-based model uh, or the other option to that would be for those who are doing conventions, you charge them, whoever hosts it, because they're getting a lot of advertising money mm -hmm. um, from vendors that obviously are going to them. So they pay for it, which makes it a freemium for everyone else. And that way you obviously can make an, a revenue from it, but yet not charge the individual to have it. Yeah, that's, that's exactly our thinking. Um, we want to make it as frictionless for the organizers and the users as possible. You know, as few clicks as they can to get into the system. Uh, the lowest bar in terms of forking out dollars out of their own wallet. Um, and the idea is that we need to grow fast because ultimately this is a social play. There's very low barriers of entry. Anyone who sees the idea and thinks it's good, they can decide to race with us and they can, we can race to the finish line. Uh, and so we've got to establish that head start, establish that lead, gather the biggest mass of customers that we can so that we are the winners um, uh, of this race. Dave, that's all the time we have for questions. Our uh, last question is always how this community can help you. I think you've uh, really laid that out. I know there's other people out here who have questions for you afterwards, so I encourage you to stick around, uh, talk to Dave, and, and network a little bit more. But thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it.